down here. Oh, hello. Okay, so hey. from right to left, we have uh, Molly Ephraim, we have Caitlin Deaver, we have Alexandra Crosby, Hi. and Nancy Travis. So you can go ahead and get started. So, um, Nancy, let's start with you. Sure. You're, you're a mom, right? Uh, in the show and in life. Okay, how old are your kids? In the show? In real life. Oh, in real life? <laughs> uh, I have two boys, 10 and 14. And how, how much do you see similarities in the things that you're dealing with with these girls on the show in real life? Uh, I don't see similarities, frankly, at all. Uh, I, I have two sons, so, so the whole thing about what they wear and uh, hair and nails and jewels, that doesn't exist in my house. Uh, although with... Um, uh, Caitlin's character, Eve, she's more of the tomboy of the family, so uh, concerned about sports and scores and things like that. My, uh, my boys are concerned about that. But I mean, this is such a fictional world. It's, it's the perfect situation. Even the arguing and yelling is so minute and concentrated. So what's coming up for each of your characters in the upcoming episodes? We have no idea. <laughs> we don't even know what we're doing today. <laughs> uh, well, we have one more episode to shoot. and uh, We don't know anything about we that. We don't know anything about that, but uh, I'm not sure where you guys are with what you've seen with, with the show. But um, we've uh, introduced Tim's father into the show and his brother. I think that show was aired, but the, his father returns, Bud, and we're shooting that episode right now, and it's a whole... Uh, situation where Bud is starting to date and it irks Tim to see somebody in his mother's place and how does he handle that. Um, and you guys, what else is, what's going on for you guys in this? Um, we, we get flat screen TVs. <laughs> oh yeah, we all get flat screen TVs in this episode. We're all really excited about it. Yeah, just like in real life. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are getting those too. Does that shake up the dynamics at all when somebody joins the cast after you've already established yourself, your characters? I mean, uh, for, for I don't expect you to say for bad, but for good, does it shake up the dynamic? It's less screen time for the rest of us, so we're not happy about it. <laughs> uh, but don't tell the brass that. Uh, it, it does shake it up a little bit because you have a whole different energy, and I think it's especially hard for the person coming in because they have to somehow fit themselves into a rhythm that we've already established. And um, I, I commend them. I, we, we did an episode where my sister comes and... Um, and she was written with a whole different kind of neurotic energy than we normally have. So that was interesting to see how that was uh, meshed into the show. Is there a hazing process? Uh, no, well, only in that we don't talk to anybody <laughs> until they prove themselves. So we are very standoff. There's an obstacle course. <laughs> how close do you each feel to your characters now after only a year? Well, we've had, we've had a long year because we did 24. So certainly closer than we would if we only did 13. Mm -hmm. But you know, but it's funny when you know you come in with certain expectations about your character, and then they write things, and you're like, oh, that was the opposite of what I thought. All right, yeah. I'll take it. You know. So, and especially, you know, I always talk about how things change from when we did the pilot and how things sort of evolve. So you know. So, but it's always it's always funny when you read something and you're like, oh, that's a quirk I hadn't planned for. All right, I'll take it. You know. <laughs> I find myself to be utterly different than Mandy in pretty much every way, except for when I went back home, my folks live in Pennsylvania, and I would go back for, you know, the Christmas break or something, and I did my hair up, or I had like bright colors on, my, my younger brother was like, wow, it's really Mandy of you. I was like, oh my god, what's going on? Yeah. It's like seeping into my brain somehow. Um, but yeah. I'm very different from my character, actually, and I think, think it's becoming more, I think I'm, my character's become a little bit more girlier, which I'm glad about because she was really in the pilot she was really tomboyish which I'm completely opposite of so I think she's really starting to you know get interested into boys and I think we'll really see that in hopefully later episodes so, so Caitlin is a glamour is a glamour puss she's a total fashion yes player. like rehearsal days <laughs> I mean the dress the nines well do you, do you then ask when you're cast what was it that made you think of me <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I... She's a darn good actress, yeah. that's, yeah, I guess that's, that's the so. bottom line of that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's Ben, um, in that Ding Dong episode, it's Ben kind of come back? 
I have no idea. <laughs> Hopefully he will. Yeah, yeah. We see, we really don't know like any what about any episodes that are coming up, but hopefully he will, yes. When do they tell you what's coming up on an episode? When, when do they spring it on you? Literally the night before. We will, uh, for example, we'll shoot this script. We don't even know we're shooting next week, so we'll shoot the script tomorrow night uh, in front of a live audience, and, um, and then go home and on our email will probably be the next day's script. So we'll see what. Each of you tell me three of your TV, favorite TV shows that you watch, and I need a sentence about why you like them. Uh, well, my favorite, no, these guys probably won't even know the shows that I, I loved. Uh, like, just in now or growing up? At least one now, and then some growing up over here. Okay, uh, well, I, I have to say uh, Bewitched. Bewitched, uh, I love that show. Uh, and why I just think it was magical and Elizabeth Montgomery, idol of mine, amazing. Um, what else did I watch? The Munsters, fantastical show. Um, Zoom, I grew up in Massachusetts, so I don't know if you knew the new Zoom review. Anybody? Zoom! Uh, <laughs> Tiny Zoom coming back. Yep, yep. And, and something current. Um, other than our own show and uh, what I mean, I I honestly don't oh, even get to watch those. Downton American Abbey. Idol. Downton. Oh, Downton Abbey. Yeah, well, we've all been watching Downton, Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey. All the time. <laughs> we've been obsessed with Downton Abbey. Um, Why? Well, I love period things, and, and I think in my career I've always wanted to do a period piece and have never had the opportunity, but. Um, I just think it's it's so well done that show, and it really takes you into this whole other world, where uh, you feel like you're seeing life in a different time, and it's very specific, and all the intrigue and the costumes. I love it. Um, I loved. I grew up um, watching all of the old sitcoms on Nick at Night when I was a kid. Um, because I was in an insomniac, so I couldn't sleep, and so I would just stay up and watch these old sitcoms, and so. Um, I loved, I'm putting, I, I loved Laverne and Shirley, it was my favorite when I was a kid because I loved, I loved the girls and I loved that they were, I mean I loved all the characters most of all, but I loved, I loved their friendship and I loved how physical they were and in fact I have three of the seasons on DVD and watch them all the time and um, Mary Tyler Moore is my other favorite. And uh, one of my favorite parts of Mary Tyler Moore is the, that she throws horrible parties and is constantly, everybody's nodding because everybody knows about her horrible <laughs> parties where there's not enough food and she has to cut the chicken in half. And I loved all of that stuff and I loved all of the characters and I loved her and wrote, and I loved Rhoda. And then, and then I also loved Rhoda. Um, and then currently it would have to be, I think, Mad Men. However, I am really far behind, so nobody's allowed to say anything about it because I'm really far behind and I'm watching it on Netflix. Um, <laughs> so nobody say anything. But what I, what I like about it is I just, I love the style and I love how sexy it is and I, I just, I love the clothes and the makeup and, and all of the, the intrigue. I just, I love it. It's just, it's just delicious. It's awesome. Um, I, I don't watch a lot of TV, um, but when I do, I, I like to watch uh, Modern Family in the middle with my family because it's just, I, I like it because it's like really real and it, it seems like a real family and what their daily lives about. And then um, also, I've watched up to season seven. I did like a whole office marathon of just like Netflix, 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 episode after episode. I love that show. I love Steve Carell. He's amazing. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed watching Homeland. I loved Claire Danes' character. I thought that that was a really exciting um, female character and just like totally interesting and self-possessed and multifaceted. So I really enjoyed watching that. Um, I've been watching Breaking Bad on Netflix on my iPad. I had to stop myself from watching it during days when we were shooting because the <laughs> dynamic of it is like so nail biting that it would take me out of my Mandy world completely. <laughs> and I would come back down and be sweating profusely and be like, oh my God, I can't believe that. <laughs> so I had to cut myself off from that. But Breaking Bad is fabulous. Um, and 30 Rock, I just, I love, it can make me laugh constantly every week. Thank you, Thank you ladies. Do you three girls find that on set you're getting mothered a little bit? by Nancy or fathered a little bit by Tim, or is it completely different? Well, I'm, I'm in the process of buying my first car, 
I moved out here from New York. Um, and Tim, as you may or may not know, is the car guy. So when I was saying something sort of offhand to someone who said, you're going to go through me, right? You're going to talk to me about it. I was like, oh, I, I guess so. I mean, like, I hadn't really thought of that. And he has helped me tremendously. He was like giving me his two cents and setting him up with his buddies to talk about, you know, what sort of options and safety features or whatever I should look at. So, yes. He's my dad away from dad. Um, and I, I, well, I'm sorry. You oh, you, you go. No, you go. No, you go. Wait, sure. <laughs> you ready? Uh, yeah, you, you sure? Because you can go. Okay. All right, you go. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, Tim, I, I, Tim helps me a lot with, um, like, comedic timing and everything. Like, never gotten that before. I haven't done, like, a lot of sitcoms before. Like, this is my first sitcom that I've actually done. And um, he just gives me a lot of advice, like I'll ask him about um, a line, how it should be delivered and everything, and he'll um, really put it into detail about how I should say it and how long, much time I should give it between each line. Um, and also, I'm older sister of um, my two younger sisters, so I feel like with Nancy, and she's like my second mom, and then these two, are they're always giving me advice, and I ha I've never had older sister before, so it's kind of like that. And I will say that on more than one occasion, Nancy has cleaned schmutz off of my face, <laughs> which is very motherly. And, um, and my mom has very, very curly hair, just like mm -hmm. Nancy, so I feel it's like she reminds me of my mom. And then the cleaning of the schmutz off my face on more than one occasion. They mother me, though, I have to say. It's actually in reverse, because I'm the person who doesn't understand the internet or games on the we apps. And, uh, we just introduced her to draw something. Yeah, she's a fiend. Like that. fiend. <laughs> she's obsessed music, now. I've played with what, her this what's whole What's happening? They're trying to make me happen. And <laughs> you should have seen us on Friday. We were all sitting on the living room set. Each one of us had oh, our iPad horrifying. or our phone. No one was talking to each other. We were just drawing things. We were laughing. But then, and then laughing to ourselves. Like, <laughs> you can think what this is, is so funny. <laughs> oh, gosh. When you're cast with uh, experienced actors that have been in the business a while, do you kind of speak yourself in their old work? Do you go back and look at Nancy's movies and Jim's stand-up? Or do you stay away from that completely? Because you're... <laughs> I haven't done uh, much of either. I mean, I, I guess we have YouTube, so that's sort of a good point of reference. Um, but I don't think that I look back at anything to sort of judge what it would be like to work with that person, because I enjoy working with them in the present in this character. Yes. I, I actually still, I, I watch Hector and Tim, and I think there's, a, there's an expertise that the two of them bring, especially to this medium, that um, uh, is actually, it, it's very difficult to do, and, and it may seem that it's just easy, but they bring a certain relaxation and underplaying and a timing to it, and they rapport together, and, and it's very interesting for me to watch. I, I actually learn from them. Yeah, and part of the experience of learning is just watching people on set and absorbing their process when you're on set, watching them and watching, watching their timing and watching how they deliver lines. That's also, that's, that's like, to me, that's the biggest learning experience because it's right there. You know, it's like a master class because you're sitting right there and you're watching somebody do exactly what it is that they're fabulous at. And so that, to me, that's like, that's the most learning for me. I don't necessarily look back at like Nancy's work or Tim's work. I've never, I mean, I've seen a couple of like home improvement episodes, but I never really looked at that and said, okay, I wonder what he'd really like to work with. Um, but I just, exactly what Alex said, I learn a lot from like being with them. And people ask me if I get a lot of advice, like specific advice from like Nancy. I just get like the vibe with working with them. Alexandra, you mentioned that you had insomnia and that you stayed up late, and that's kind of interesting. So, have you gotten past it? And if not, how do you negotiate that? With yeah. Your own schedule. <laughs> <laughs> My parents are going to laugh at this. Yeah, I, I actually outgrew it. Um, but when I was a kid, I couldn't sleep, and so I would stay up late and watch Nick at Night for hours. And um, I outgrew it by the time I was like 12, and now, I, now I'm a great sleeper. Ask anybody, I'm a great sleeper. <laughs> that sounds weird. Um, but, uh, but um, so I would stay up and I would watch all of these old shows, which is how I know all of the old shows, because they weren't, you know, they weren't current when I was a kid. But that's how I knew about both of the New Heart shows and Rhoda and Mary Tyler Moore and Happy Days. And I knew about all of them in Bewitched and I Dream of Jeannie, all of them, because that's, that's what I would do. But no, if I had trouble sleeping now, it would be horrible. <laughs> it would be exhausting. Nancy, you mentioned that um, 
that Tim bring and Hector, they bring a, a certain expertise to, to the medium. But in your experience from the moment you, you got into TV to now, like what, how do you feel the sitcoms have evolved? Uh, I think there is more of a, uh, a, a drive or a, a push to be real, to be as real as possible and still tell a story in 20 minutes and, uh, and uh, have it be relatable. And, but, but really it's about reality and specificity and believability and not uh, making a show that's just traveling from one joke to the next. What is the story? At least that's what we try to do on this show. We're trying to tell a story in the short amount of time that we have and be true to what the experiences are of these characters in this family. And, uh, and Tim especially spends a lot of time dissecting the script and saying, well, this doesn't make sense and this wouldn't happen and this, uh, you can't just shortchange this for the sake of convenience. We have to explore this. And it really is, we spend a lot of time getting a, a, a grounding and a threshold before we throw jokes on top of it. We just saw the episode uh, with the Shakespeare play. And uh, <laughs> what was it like to improvise Shakespeare? Well, it was fake improvisation. <laughs> if I was improvising, it would be also really interesting. Um, it was It was fun, and it's, I come from a background of theater, so I felt even nervous being there, knowing my lines and forgetting my lines, but like being in that position still sort of made me nauseous, because I've definitely been on stage and just gone up on lines and been like, I don't, I, no one can help me. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a monologue and no one can save me, and I just have to like sort of fumble my way through and get out there. Do you guys do any improvisation in the show, or is it all scripted? Um, I would say from time to time a there's bit, a little yeah. bit that gets added. I judge all my lines. Sure. Uh, everything. You do a lot of judging. I judge a lot. <laughs> I a little word. this, a little that. And Tim, of course, you just Tim really never know what's going to come out of his mouth. You just never, ever know. You never ever Yeah, expect there's always, there's always, when you have a line after his, and you know he's going to say, you're like, just wait, waiting for a pause. When am I going to say my line? Waiting? And then there's that, like, long pause. You're like, all right. I'm, and then he says something else. You're like, all right, never mind. <laughs> or he'll say, so he's very generous, too. He'll say something, and it'll be really funny. <laughs> and then he'll say, the scene will work out in such a way, he'll say, all right, you say that funny line. That's yeah. okay, you say that. <laughs> I'll, give you, you give that. I'll give you that. We have to pay him a lot of money after that. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. Makes you look good, though. Look good, yeah. You, Alexandria, those little boys who played boy, they're so cute. They're um, so cute. Yeah, have, can you tell us about any experiences working with them? Well, I can tell you number one. <laughs> stop laughing. I can tell you number one. <laughs> that they are not light, and they are very heavy. And um, they do not send you to baby training. I don't know anything about babies. And they do not send you to baby training before doing a job in which you are interacting with babies. So, you know, and, I've, and I will tell you this, I have played a mom maybe four times. This is a horrifying thing that's happened. I don't know whose idea it was, but I think times is, times is too many times is horrifying. I'm a grandmother, so shut <laughs> up. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not saying it's horrifying because of my age. I'm saying it's horrifying because I don't know what to do around babies. So they don't, it's true. Everybody can say that, I, that, you know, it's like I see a baby and I'm like, how old are you? What, are you going to college? Like, I don't know anything about them. She, but, she's figured out something where they, you ask them where the belly is. Yeah, where's your and belly? That's the them, game. She asks them that all the time and it keeps them yeah. occupied. I yeah, guess. it's where's your belly? And then... And then you point to different parts, so like, is this your belly? No. Okay, well, is this your belly? No. And then when you find their belly, and then they laugh and laugh and laugh, you're like, well, can I eat it? And then they're like, no. <laughs> and so that game is really good. There's a game with, a horsey game is also, a, 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 or a roller coaster, either one. With, but this, I have a very limited knowledge, but what I can tell you is that they weigh a, Approximately 35 pounds. If you have a show, you can have them. We're trying to get them, get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> too hard. It's too hard. There was the diaper Very hard. leakage. Oh, yes, I did get paid on. I can't help but laugh. One of them had a leaky diaper, and I was just like, no! <laughs> like in slow motion. And it was a beautiful dress. I think it was a free people dress, and it was so beautiful. And I was like, D and Dina's a wardrobe designer. I'm like, Dina, I don't know. I don't know. Help! <laughs> you know, and it's not, you can't be like, that baby, you know, because they're really expensive, so you can't just throw them around, but, you know, I mean, the thing is, they are so cute that it's just, it's, they're unbearably cute, and by unbearable, I mean, it's because they're so heavy that you're just like, God, you're cute, but where can I put you down? What are you each planning to do for your hiatus? 
Okay. I, I'm going back to visit my folks in Pennsylvania, my friends in New York, do a little bit of traveling, maybe take my mom on a little vacation because she works too hard, and I don't know, then I'll be back here exploring California with a new car, hopefully. <laughs> so if you see someone driving really slowly... With their blinker on. With the blinkers on. <laughs> it's me. Um, I, I do like to work, like, constantly. I love uh, doing a lot of work. Um, so me and my manager have just been discussing, like, there's been a lot of uh, movies out for, like, um, 14 to 15 year old girls. So I've been, like, just discussing about, like, what I should be doing, like, what movies I should be doing on my hiatus. And if not, then I'll just relax with my family. I'm going to go to Hawaii, which is very exciting, um, and, uh, and, and then move apartments, which is horrible. <laughs> it's, 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 gonna, it's the worst. I mean, so that's part of what the, the summer plan is, is to move apartments, and it's, I mean, it's just the worst. Living in, living in boxes and not knowing where any of your stuff is is going to be awful. But then it'll be great because, you know, it'll be a nice new place. But that's more or less. And then relax in between the fabulous vacation and the horrors of moving. I'm going to try and get in on those 14 to 15 year old cards that she's <laughs> doing. I'll put my hair up. Or something. Uh, and I just travel, travel with my family, and, and, uh, and hopefully be back here in August. What type of traveling do you guys like to do? You mentioned traveling, and it sounds like I love to travel. Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, we're at a point in our family where my sons like to be with us, so we're trying to capitalize on that as much as possible. Uh, but this summer we'll go to Israel and uh, a little bit of Europe, and I'm trying to do the big trips while uh, while I have income and and the kids want to be with us. Do you play some really sexy roles when you when you're younger? How does you make the transition to mom and grandmother? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, you know, I uh, I don't even know that I make the transition. I think it's dictated to me, based on what uh, what I'm offered and what I'm uh, I, I get hired to do. Uh, but I, I you know I think they're all facets of of who I am, and um, you know the the sexy roles are still in my uh, my range. <laughs> But this is where I am right now. So it's all, you just sort of, you, hopefully you're open to play anything. So with the title of the show being Last Man Standing, um, if there was a, an event Spin -off? and there was only <laughs> just one Last Man Standing, mm. fictional or real, mm. which, one would it, which one would you want? Uh, one Last Man Standing? One Last really? Man Standing, that's all there. Who would really? you want or who would it be? Who would you want? Uh, one last man standing. It's going to be those twins. It's going to be those twin boys. I will not be happy till they're all down. <laughs> what about you? I'm telling you, it's going to be those twin boys. It can only be one. Well, then they will have to fight to the death because they will be one of them. Because at two and a half, they're 50,000 pounds. So I swear it's going to be one of those babies and we will, they will fight to the death and it will be one of those. Okay. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> on the show, like the fiction or whatever, real. whatever. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I one last man standing. One last man standing. <laughs> oh. So your dad. Were well, you dad. up all like, night? Daddy. 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 Tim Beaver. It's Tim Beaver, the last man standing. I don't know. My Sorry. first reaction was like, if we had Steve Jobs back, I would want Steve Jobs to be funny. the guy. We don't, unfortunately. Like I feel like he he had the vision. If everything else went down around us, he'd be able to pull us out. So maybe the next Steve mm. Jobs, whoever the next Steve Jobs is. It's one of the person. babies, I'm telling you. <laughs> this is such a great area for production, and this lot has mm -hmm. been here forever. What are some places out in Studio City around town you've discovered you like to be? Molly, you want to take that I one? I can take that, because I live she here lives near here, uh, yeah. without a car. I've been living in Studio City. Um, Food-wise, I love the sushi in this area. Mm -hmm. There's about Artisan Cheese 20. Gallery. Yeah, the Artisan mm -hmm. Cheese Gallery is great. Great. Mm. Sandwiches and salads. That Kiwami place that just Kiwami's opened. Kiwami's awesome. Sushi place. Katsuya. What else? I love Laurel Tavern. Oh man. What about shops? Really Any eats. shops around here? There's like a, Trader oh, there's, Joe's across the street. She goes to Trader Wasteland. Joe's all the time. Wasteland is my favorite. It's Alex's personal favorite. I like the paper store. What's that paper store down there? Oh, paper source? Is that what it's called? I made that up. Paper source. I think it is. Is that what it's called? Yep, I think so. 
Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.